working out in the garden today. It's a really nice day out today. Nice and breezy. Uh, dogs are rolling around and stuff that smells horrible. Spock sticking in the shade. Anna just cut huge handfuls of, uh, of some chives. There's Anna. And uh, what I'm gonna start working on is I'm gonna start working on my hydroponics uh, for next year. So that way I'm not gonna spend most of the spring trying to build the system. And I'm trying to build this out of as much recycled material as I can. So I'm gonna build a platform here. I'll, I'll show you what the platform is in a bit. Um, but I don't want to buy any saw horses, so we have a bunch of spare buckets. Um, I'm going to put buckets here, put the platform on top of it, and then later install the NFT system. And then I'm going to drill holes in all of these one gallon black buckets here, and that'll be for um, our other hydroponic section. So, all right, hang on just a second here. All right, so here's the platform. Um, it's an old door that we had in the sunroom, solid wood door. I just never felt like throwing it away. Um, the underside is damaged pretty good from um, Max tearing up the, um, the window slats right here. So they were torn up pretty bad, but having all the windows in it, it'll still let light through. Um, you know, plenty of light through, so that way any plants grow underneath it or anything, we can uh, still have sunlight going to them. All right, well I got all the holes drilled with the uh, grommets. And for anybody who's wondering how to do these Dutch buckets, if you haven't seen MHP Gardener's video, um, this is a one inch or a three quarter inch grommet. Um, you drill a one inch hole and just pop the grommet in there. And then, but before you put the half inch PVC in here, you need to sand down the, um, about this much of, of from the end of the PVC pipe. Just sand it down a little bit so you can fit it in there. What I found easy to do is sand it down a little bit, dip it in some water, and slide it in here, and then it'll work. But uh, this is the part number. It's a 3M PL8. Um, I get that from Granger. You get 100, or this is the 50 pack. And um, still got quite a bit left, but this is uh, $10 for 50 pack. Um, so pretty inexpensive, but I have all 10 buckets here ready to go. Just need to build a platform for them and then uh, put them on here or put them on the platform. All right, so we have the um, water reservoir, nutrient water reservoir, and the pump house and everything like that installed right there. And then here's the power plant or powerhouse. Uh, that's going to have all the solar components in it and then I'm just going to run my uh, charging wire from here kind of through the back here and then I'm going to have it run over here to these cheap Harbor Freight panels since I don't have them hooked up to the house anymore and these ones hooked up to the house so these will charge my um, hydroponic system so, all right, cool. So this is how big the cherry tomatoes are getting. Um, that pole right there, that's a 10 foot pole. Um, and that, it, it, I don't know if I can really get it, but that is only about a foot away from that. So these tomatoes are about nine feet tall. Let's see if we can kind of zoom in. Lisa cherries. So I have some big boys that are doing okay. Um, my Rutgers are doing real well. I have these are supersonics, and these are just huge. They're nice size supersonics or tomatoes. Um, what I'm going to do next year, though, is I'm only going to plant one tomato per bucket because. The root system and everything, it has plenty of room for the root system, but how I have this set up, um, the sun comes this way. And I figured that if I had it set up this way, that uh, they would do an okay job. They wouldn't get blocked out with any sun because all the plants on the other side are short. 
um, but they're really actually just competing with each other and um, uh, not getting a ton of sun. So um, what I'm going to do is just plant one per bucket. It'll be a little bit easier to prune as well. And then uh, these are San Marzano tomatoes. They're sauce tomatoes, but they're not doing really good. I don't know if they're not getting enough water or what, but uh, they definitely have plenty of nutrients um, in the solution, but I have a feeling that the jets might be a little plugged. Um, and instead of just yanking everything out, this plant hasn't really been doing too well. It's had a lot of blossom end rot this year. So what I'm probably just gonna do is give it a few more days, take the two ripe ones off, and then um, just cut the stems where the sauce to, or where the actual good tomatoes are sitting, and then just let them vine ripen. Um, but getting a lot more. I mean, if you can see in here, you know, I'm getting even. More, I'm getting more starts of tomatoes, and this is still doing great. I mean, it's tall to me, but I'm short. But those are the beans. The beans have already gone up. Let me block out the sun a little bit. The beans have already gone up to the 10 foot pole. And, uh, and already coming down about three feet. So jalapeno plant, I think is uh, doing either the best or the second best considering what it's producing. Um, I'm getting right about 20 to 25 jalapenos a week off of here. And uh, the bees are just all over these. They're all over all these plants. Um, are just doing awesome and then my habaneros are doing really well um, I should have enough habaneros to last me See, this one's big it's a big habanero it cost a few bucks in the grocery store um, but I should have enough habaneros on here to last me for a few years with the um, you know as spray for the deer and everything so and then you all know about my cucumbers. My zucchini plant has been really resilient. It's uh, This looks like it's gonna be the last zucchini because it's now succumbing to powdery mildew. It's had rust, powdery mildew. It's still put, trying to put off leaves, but I'm gonna take this out before it gets into my uh, nutrient solution. And then, Got a few eggplants down there. Oh, it's looking good. And then, the, what are these again, honey? Gypsy peppers. Oh, gypsy pepper, peppers. We've already pulled a bunch off of these. And uh, they're all the tomatoes on the back side of the plant. And this is running 100% on solar. I've had it off of solar for how, how many days? Almost a week now? It's been off of uh, solar for almost, a, or off of the grid for almost a week. You can see the battery is fully charged. And that's with one panel. And it's all kind of jury rigged, but I'll condense it into another panel soon, or uh, another container soon. And here are some uh, cucumber beetle eggs my wife found. She's gonna. Go ahead and cut them off and feed them to the chickens. Chickens will have some nice free food. So I'm harvesting some uh, veggies today. And uh, I'm using my harvester bucket that I made. I bought this bucket from Dollar Tree. And then just grabbed some duffel bag straps. Put one strap around my back, one strap around my neck. I just need to get a pad and then we'll be alright. So we've got some nice green peppers throughout here. Got some jalapenos. These are Anna's jalapenos. And then I'm going to start uh, harvesting some of the tomatoes and some of my jalapenos. So go ahead and put this in our other harvester bucket. This actually is surprisingly pretty comfortable. I just need to get two more duffel bag straps. So Jeff, when you listen to this, if you have any duffel bags sitting around, just send a few straps my way. 
that would be highly a prequel. Actually, Anna would be appreciative because then she can have her own harvesting bucket. And it's pruning in my bush. Well, here's a better view. Um, Anna just finished pruning my tomatoes. And now you can really see how many tomatoes and I'm getting per vine. All these right here. Got more going up here. More back here. All these tomatoes, look at those, all the way up. Size comparison, that's my hand right there. All those tomatoes. Hoping that they'll all start to ripe, ripen here soon. They're indeterminate, so they're going to ripen kind of different times, but. And then I've already picked these about a half a bucket full so far. Got some sauce tomatoes, some regular slicers, cherries, probably dehydrate them, and then pulverize them and make tomato paste. Here, let's try one. Mm, that's good. Got a ton of jalapenos in here. Like blind cutting, I hope I don't you cut your finger. Cut my finger. Yeah. Skin colored jalapenos. How many you got in there? Oh, well, uh, just so far. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's take nine or ten. But look at how many are still in here. It's like they're so abundant, it's really actually hard to kind of see them. We dehydrated some uh, tomatoes here and uh, pulverized them in a blender and then went ahead and packed it in here. Make dehydrated tomato powder. And that way we don't have to make tomato paste. We can just substitute it and make our own.